All right, we are good to go. I am with, uh, first of all, let me introduce myself. I'm Omar Thabit. Uh, this is another interview on Motivate Me 313. I am with that boy, Sifu Mia, uh, Dr. Sifu Mia. All right, I gotta make sure I, I, I uh, get his title correct. What up, Sifu, man? You all right, man? Uh, I appreciate you. I know we talked about this already, but man, I appreciate you uh, doing this interview. You know, you come on the Fantasy Guys, you're doing these interviews on Motivate Me 313. I tried on the fantasy guys. I'm not that good with football, but you know, I tried. I tried. Hey, you did a great job, and you you also had a lot of people coming in. Like as soon as I said seafood's on the line, we had we had Bengalis from Bangladesh, from England, everybody, <laughs> everybody was there. So I appreciate you, man. Um, you know, but what this interview basically is all about, you seafood. So we're gonna get to know you and how you uh, get through life, and how you hopefully you're gonna be able to motivate people. So. My first question to you is, can you tell us about yourself? Yeah, um, I mean, that's what, bro, when you first sent the questions, well, before I start everything, I just want to give a quick shout out to everybody. Uh, it was E yesterday, so I just want to say even more to everybody, man. Everybody wants it, you know. Um, it's late, but still better late than ever, right? Yeah. So even sure. more here, but, um, but when you sent the questions, man, they kind of threw me off guard with the first question, because every time you get that question, it's like, who are you? You always think, like, you know, you always take a step back, like, who am I, right? Yeah. Because, I mean, you follow me on Instagram, so, like, on Instagram, it's like, I'm able to see Papa, right? So, like, I'm, like, doing music, or, like, you know, just joking around, and laughing around. Outside on the basketball courts, we play basketball together. You see me, I'm coming for your back, trying yeah. to take the people's right? Uh, but I was thinking, like, take away all of that, and, like, who, who are you at the end of the day is, is it's something that you gotta, gotta introspectively think. And, um, Honestly, I, I look at myself as like more of like a person that, that's family oriented and a friend, you know, like a friend and uh, family guy first and foremost. But um, outside of that, I mean, I came from Hamtramck. I grew up in Hamtramck for like 20 some years. Um, and uh, I mean, that's my that's my community, that's my blog, that's where I grew up to know all you guys, uh, Bangladesh community, the Yemeni population, everybody. Um, and. Then I went to school. Um, I unfortunately didn't go to MI. Um, you know, my pack took me somewhere different to Cast Tech, which is in Detroit. And uh, from there, I ended up going to undergrad at Michigan um, in Ann Arbor. And I did four years there, got my bachelor's in science. And then from there, it was a stepping stone to pharmacy school, which ultimately led me to becoming a pharmacist. So um, if you see me at Rite Aid wearing a white coat, don't say what's up to me. Hey, and, and that's 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 the cool part about you, Sifu, is that you got that homey self to you, where like you're a cool guy, people easy to talk to, but you're also a professional. You know, you're, you are a pharmacist. You got the job done, and uh, you're carrying the torch for your family and everybody else that may look up to you. So that's why we got a lot of respect for you, Sifu. Uh, so my next question is, um, so what was the hardest part about completing pharmacy school? Man, you know how we this, bro. Um, honestly. Pharmacy school, the journey was the hardest, like, and I mean that in two cents. I mean that figuratively and literally. So figuratively meaning the journey, just going through the mental, you have to have a mental capacity, finish the coursework, the load work. Um, you have, you know, I had to go through undergrad, get my prereqs, and then go through all of that, and then end up at pharmacy school and do another four years. So just mentally, you have to put yourself in a place where you're ready and preparing for school each and every day. Um, it's like sports, like you have to get ready for the season, right? Um, and I mean, literally, as in the actual journey. So, pharmacy school, I went to Fair State, which is, if, if you put up your Michigan map, it's like up there, bro. And that's uh, it's like a three and a half hour drive, you know, give or take, depends on how fast you go. I don't know, I like to go like eight sometimes. <laughs> but uh, going from Detroit to Detroit at the time I was in Hatramic, so Hatramic to Fairs, which is in Big Rapids, would take me forever. And luckily I met like a few few of my you know best friends up there and we would just carpool back and forth, back and forth. So honestly the journey was the hardest, like leaving the aspect of actually leaving your family to go to school, especially when you know in the back of your head your family need to, you know, to do things around the house or um, just as a foundation. Um, but that was probably the hardest part of, of pharmacy school for me personally. So. Yeah, and that's 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 definitely a big one is uh you know not being around your family and that it's, it's always hard and um 
you did it for eight, I mean, four years, you know, so that's, people need to understand, going to school, you went to school for eight years, but four years of that is tough. Fair State is pretty far, you know, so, I heard people, I, I heard, I'm more used to say it's in another country. Yeah, I know, that's what I was going to say, like, I heard people, like, first of all, people, like, defer going there because it's so far, and then another, a lot of people say it's, like, its own country out there, man, so that's it's fun. A, it's, a, it's, when I tell you it's a culture shock, it's really a culture shock, like, uh, Ferris itself, like the city of Big Rapids, is just the, imagine the campus, and then outside the campus is just all like rural area, and you just have like one walk apartment in TGIF, that's it. <laughs> so you you had a lot of Walmart food and TGIF uh, throughout the way. I, I never even went to TGIF, bro. I just went to Walmart, which is definitely like making pace every Friday, bro. So I got really good at the chefs. Oh, uh, okay, okay, that's what's up, man. All right, so uh, my next question is, mashallah, every time we, or I, at least I see you, you always seem like you're in a great mood, man. So why do you feel it's important to always be positive around people, Siku? Man, um, have you ever been around somebody that's kind of, uh, that, that's a, like, a quote-unquote, a pessimist? Yeah, man, I'm going to be honest with you. I can't deal, I, I don't like being around them. It kills the vibe. <laughs> right, it, it's, it's like when you wake up on the wrong side of the bed, uh, everybody has those days. You know, where you you just don't feel like going through the day. You know, you have the emotions, but you have to kind of think about how. For me, I think about how that affects everybody else. So when you're in a down, when you're in a mood that's kind of like down or depressed or kind of sad, um, or just in a nasty mood, if you look around the people around you, they kind of they, they absorb that energy. So everything's about energy in a sense and vibe. So like when you're when you're down and depressed, everybody can feel that, and they kind of get like you're saying the, the vibe is good. So like, if you if you throw on a smile and like you try to keep it positive, you know, so it rubs off some, it rubs off to the next person. Or if somebody else is having a down day, they see you in a positive manner, in a positive light, and they kind of their spirits are kind of uplifted. So I try to, I mean, I, I had my days, bro. Like I, you know, like I'm pretty sure you have your days, right? Like, yes, sir. Gone. But you kind of have to like think about it in a sense of like that's where my family came for that they they put this in me think about other people too at the same time as you think about yourself. So try not to be selfish and try to like, I guess, incorporate everybody and just try to have a positive spirit so everybody else can also have a positive spirit. And when you, when you combine everybody together, man, it's, it's a different, it's a different, it's a different feel. Like when everybody's together and happy and, and firing on all cylinders, it's like, I like to look at it like a team, like a basketball team or anything like that. When the chemistry is great, you guys are winning. So. Yep. That's it. That's one hundred percent true, man. I agree to that, man. Those are some great, some great words right there, Sifu. So, um, you know, you you are a person that I know uh, gives back to his family, gives back to the community, and then stuff like that. So, why do you feel like it's important to give back to your community? And you're still young, and I know I'm sure you have a lot more plans, a lot more things to do. So, you know, why do you feel like it's important for people to give back to their community? 27 is young, we're all in here. Yeah, I'm 28, man. I'm, I'm trying I'm trying to... See, there's people that say we young, there's people that say we old. So I'm going to go ahead and go with the young route right now, man. Because I interview people that are like 50. Yeah, we're in the middle. We're in the middle. <laughs> I think after like 25, after I hit 25, I'm like, yeah, bro. Like, that's it. Like, Trust that's me. Better. I feel old. I feel old. But I guess in the sense of when you interview like people that are like 50, 45, 50... We're considered still young. I, guess, I think 30 is officially the old. I think once you hit 30, you're old. That's why you get the next chapter of your life. Yeah. It's all relative, right? Yeah. Well, one of the things on your question was how. Basically, why do you why do you feel it's important to give back? Why do you feel that it's important for people and yourself to give back to the community? So, um, so I was looking at this question and I was thinking, man, like, what what's what's so great about the community and or why? Do I myself like try to help the community or try to be a community person? That's because the people around me and everybody in my life, from you, from my family, from my friends, like you guys are one of the biggest factors of why I am where I am too. On top of me putting in the work, like I went to school with, I went to school again for eight years, and uh, the four years undergrad, uh, I had three three of my roommates. You know, shout out to them, Ifam, Mahadi, and Omi. Um, without them, I don't know if I would be able to get through as easily uh, the four years. You know, without without them, I don't know if I would be able to get through as smoothly. 
And then when I went to pharmacy school, I had another great group of guys, um, and they helped. They uplifted me, and they, you know, they were like the founding. They were like the core strength for me to get through those four years at school too. So when I look at community, I'm thinking everybody can help each other to become better. So if I go ahead and help somebody else, that person can in return help me out and also help other person people out. So it's like we're all trying to give back to each other and make sure that everybody reaches a goal where where everybody's comfortable and they're kind of just getting along. Because at the end of the day, like if all of us, we're, we're all coming from the same community, like Hamtramck, and I, I really want to see the whole Hamtramck succeed because I know a majority of the background of the people we come from a place where we don't have much. So um, it's just great seeing when people succeed and they finally get to take care of their families and friends and they get to a place where they get to live their dreams and their passions and you know so if I'm by doing this interview or if you know you starting this channel if that helps people get motivated and if it helps people um, get through the day and do what they're able to do that's you know I feel like I played a, a, a good part or I played I did something and believe it or not, something as simple as being positive around people, it would be considered giving back to the community and charity, you know, putting a smile on your face, you know, motivating people. So that's why we appreciate you, Sipu, man. You're the man. Uh, and keep being, keep doing you, man. So these are the three questions I usually ask every interviewer uh, or any viewee. As, uh, first of all, tell, tell us about yourself. And then uh, the second one is what gets you up every morning? All right, so what's Sipu's motivating factor every morning, basically? I mean, after Ramadan, bro, I realized coffee. That's need coffee, man. <laughs> you know, it's funny. People, people will say coffee. People say their iPhone gets them up, basically. Alarm clock. And then people say kids. But I, I don't know if you're walking around with kids yet, Sipu, or not. But... <laughs> uh, I'm not a father yet, but hopefully you tell me what they do. But, um, Inshallah. Uh, honestly, what gets me up and what gets me through gets me through the day is, um, you know, trying to. It's, the fam it's my family. It's a. It's a. I'm a family. You know, it's a big aspect of family and making sure that my family's able to do what they want to do and we're stable in every sense, financially, emotionally, whatever. And if I gotta get up and do what I gotta do to make sure that happens, then you know, I I go ahead and do it. So. Well, um, I don't know, bro. The last 30 days of Ramadan made me, you know, second years, I'm like, bro, I need some coffee in my life, bro. <laughs> Trust me, you ain't the only one. I got a cup of coffee right here. I just don't want to sip it while I'm interviewing you, but that coffee ain't behaving different, man. Um, so my last question to you, Sipu, is for someone that may be walking in the same or similar footsteps as you, uh, what advice would you give them? Motivate me. Motivate you? I mean, that's just the slogan that I had. <laughs> My motivation for you is a whole different story, but I need I need to get you a basketball, I need to get you a football. We gotta we gotta start working on the court, bro. Oh, I'll be. <laughs> but for other people, let's see. Uh, for for just in general, for people trying to follow a similar footstep or career pathway, I would say um, first and foremost, try to mentally prepare yourself for what you're getting into. Um, so it's it, because at times like you don't know what you're gonna get into. Like, if you're just taking a blind foot, you know, you get blindsided left and right. So, um, try to prepare yourself in whatever it is you're doing, whether you're following a dream, whether you're following a, a certain passion. Um, and then, the, this is the biggest takeaway for me is community. Like, try to, family, my, my parents raised me in a certain way they, where they gave me a poor foundation, right? But when you're put in a different environment with different type of people, they might offset you or like throw you off the course. So for me, alhamdulillah, I was blessed to be part of my friends group and we had similar passions. We had similar uh, an outlook on life where we all decided that it's going to match up well with what we're trying to do. So, and I don't know if you listen to J. Cole, bro. Do you listen to J. Cole? Listen yeah, to I, I mean, I've, I listen to him. I'm not listening and act like I know every song of his, but I've heard of him. I mean, I know his songs. <laughs> yeah, there was a there was a call lyric where he was like, you know, just motivate, get your team, motivate your team, and just put a team around you where you guys are having the same thing, so or the same goals or similar goals. So I would say like, make sure you have a, uh, a good set of help or like a good foundation, um, and set yourself up with some friends or people that you know you connect with. 
that it's it's more than just quote unquote like a peer uh, um, or like a colleague. Um, try to have like brothers or for my for the uh, ladies, try to have like sisters where it's like a sisterhood or a brotherhood where at the end of the day when you're going through those days where you don't and you're like, man, I don't think I can do this. You know, you're, you have your friends that kind of uplift you or you have your family that kind of uplifts you. Uh, those eight years, man, of school, I don't know if I'd be able to do it without them. So, um, and this relates back to the community because that's where it starts off from. Like, I grew up in Hachemi. This is where I met my, my friends through my community. So I would say just get into your community, try to help as much as you can and try to uh, get this foundation of friends that kind of drive you towards your goal, so. Well, that's some great words, man. And it's funny how life takes us one spot and then it pretty much inspires you for the rest of your life, man. Like, you know, I don't know you mentioned that those those eight years and it seems like it was a strong impact on your life and it kind of made you who you are today, too. Uh, that's what it sounds like, man. Those eight years were crazy, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Honest, bro, like, school was tough, don't get me wrong. But my four years of undergrad at Michigan, when I went to Ann Arbor, Jesus, those were like, Ann Arbor would help, but like, it, I would question my intellect at times. Like, I would take exams and people were getting like two questions right. I was getting, I would like, uh, bro, you come out with like a 20% on your exam and you just walk out the building saying, you know, like, do I belong here? Yeah. You know, things like that. So, but, uh, but you never quit. But you never quit. That's the whole that's the whole point, man. And everybody goes through that same here, you know, where you you fail the test, but at the end of the day, you're still waking up the next day, ready to take the next one, ready to take the next test. Exactly, bro. So you gotta again have to prepare yourself for all of those things and just have a good supporting foundation. So that's what's up, man. Great words, man. I'm looking forward to sharing this. I appreciate you, Sipu. Um, I'm going to just stop the video. Then I want to just chat for a little longer. And then we'll, we'll head out. Thank you guys for tuning in. Again, Omar Thabit, Sipu Mia is Motivate Me 313. Appreciate you guys.